How much have we really changed from the 1960s when flats were being advertised and on the ad it would say, coloured need not apply? This was a common occurrence for many black people, unfortunately, which was very confusing for black people at the time because the majority of them came, came to the country on invite with promises of a better life. Not to say that most, if not all, of the black people that came over on the Rim Rush were suffering in the Caribbean. No, that was not the case. Some of them were living very comfortable lives, but were just promised better. Some were still hopeful that they could live in harmony with their fellow white neighbours. But this was not an ideology of the many, just a few. To more present times now, there was some research posted by a charity called Shelter, which states, black people are more than three times likely to experience homelessness. One in 23 households become homeless or threatened with homelessness, versus one in 83. 11% of people applying for help are black even though black people only make up 3% of the households in England. This has become a concerning issue for people of colour, leaving them to feel alone, dazed and confused and very, very vulnerable. The BBC went undercover, posing as landlord and tenants, and their findings were that London estate agents were refusing to rent to black tenants. This is why I say, how much have we changed since the 1960s? The good thing about the 1960s, at least there was a sign saying, no coloreds need apply. At least then you would not be opening up yourself to heartache and disappointment knowing where you stand from the beginning. One of the most diverse countries in the world and an organisation is refusing to rent to black tenants without even looking at their documents. It's sad, an unspoken truth. But this is just one of the many life experiences for many black individuals. This situation has not just been confounded to the dynamics of the housing. No, not at all. There have been situations where some interracial relationships have been affected dramatically because of these issues, whereby a couple who are financially stable are looking to move into a new apartment but because if the male is of colour refuses to go to the viewing because he doesn't want to impact the viewing in a negative way because before meeting his partner he's experienced these life experiences that have left a bitter taste in his mouth he does not want to be the reason for them not to gain the property they so much desire and are capable of achieving. As individuals, we all have our own personal life and lived experiences. And sometimes it's hard to explain them to somebody else. And this can sometimes cause confusion, tension in a relationship, which is very unfair because it's dynamics that are out of their control. Trying to explain some of the difficult experiences you've experienced before meeting your partner can be very, very difficult. Because they know and love you, it's hard for them to see how you'd be treated this way by others. As human beings, we all have our own personal lived experiences. Sometimes, because love is involved, it's hard to explain your past experiences to your present partner. Because they know and love you, they sometimes see you as a hero. They don't see the unfortunate and lonely and sad circumstances you may have faced before them. And this can cause tension in a relationship, which is very unfortunate. 
because it's no fault of their own. This is a dynamic that is well out of their control. Does the person that has spent most, if not all of his life savings, have the right to decide who lives in his property? Some would say yes, some would say good heavens no. But the thing is, being selective means you are doing things in regards to your own understanding. And what I have found in life, there is always more to know than what we know. So being selective could actually be harming yourself. Sometimes it's best to just safeguard yourself and follow things in regards to the legal perimeters without discriminating. Where do we go from here? We need to put an end to discrimination and racism and understand so far as we are all gifted with life, we are all equal and we are one human race. I understand that there's many that would say this is their country and if we don't like it, we can leave. But the funny thing is, there's many of us that believe this to be our country too. So what do we do? We start anew. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Stay blessed and stay safe in whatever your journey may be. Gift of the Gap. Share your views. Speak your truths.